rotational kinetic energy. So we have three goals today. So first we'll define rotational kinetic energy. Then we're going to think about the concept of rotational kinetic energy as applied to a spinning figure skater. And then we'll spend a little bit of time just summarizing the parallels between rotational motion and straight line motion. So what is rotational kinetic energy anyway? So what it is is energy associated with rotation, just like uh, translational kinetic energy is energy associated with motion. That's really kind of straight line motion. This is motion as well, but motion that is associated with rotation. So if you think about uh, the straight line motion, we know this one. K is 1 half mv squared. That's an object that's moving but not rotating. What an about an object that is rotating but not actually translating, so rotating only, we say K is one-half times the rotational equivalent of mass, that's the rotational inertia I, and it's not V squared, but it's the rotational equivalent of V squared, that's omega squared. So it's one-half the rotational inertia multiplied by the angular speed squared. Okay, so for an object that is both moving in a straight line, in other words translating, as well as rotating, and an example might be a rolling object, then the total kinetic energy is the sum of these two pieces. There's the translational kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, and the rotational kinetic energy, one-half i omega squared. And so they both contribute to the total kinetic energy. So let's apply this to a figure skater. So, figure skater is spinning, and she moves her arm in closer to her body. And as we talked about when we looked at angular momentum, this has the effect of making the figure skater go faster. And that comes from the reduction in the rotational inertia. And so the rotational, the angular uh, velocity has to increase to make up for that. But what happens to the skater's rotational kinetic energy? What do you think? Does it increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, so let's just write out what it is, right? So the initial kinetic energy we can write out as k initial is one-half i initial omega initial squared. And for some strange reason, which should be apparent in a minute, I'll write this in the following way. One-half i omega, i times omega, and then separately we've got another factor of omega outside that bracket. So one-half i omega times omega. Final kinetic energy we will write in the same kind of funny format, one half i final omega final squared, which is equal to one half i final omega final times omega final. So what was the point of writing it out in that odd way? Well, consider the, the factors that are in the brackets. How do they compare? i initial omega initial compared to i final omega final. Well, remember that i initial times omega initial is the initial angular momentum, and I final omega final is the final angular momentum. And this process of the figure skater pulling her arms in, or even taking her arms out, will conserve angular momentum. So those terms in brackets are the same. Okay, so the one halves are the same, the terms in brackets are the same, the only difference between the initial and final kinetic energies are coming from the differences between omega i and omega f and we know omega f is bigger than omega i, so that means the final kinetic energy is larger than the initial kinetic energy. What? It's larger? Where does the extra kinetic energy come from? And the only place it can really come from is the skater herself. So she does positive work on her arms, bringing them closer to her body. Okay, the displacement is inward, the force needed to make that happen is directed inward, that is positive work. And the interesting thing that happens there is that work done by the figure skater shows up as an increase in that kinetic energy. Okay, so the last things we're going to do before we really switch over to a different topic, harmonic motion is coming up next, we'll look at analogies. Okay, so we have a lot of different analogies. In fact, I need two screens just to show them all. Okay, so these are fairly straightforward ones. We have position, velocity, acceleration. For straight line motion, we might use x and v and a to represent those ideas. 
and in rotational motion we have equivalents theta, omega, and alpha. And you can see there's a connection between them. If you take x divided by the radius r, you get theta. Omega is v tangential over r. Alpha is a tangential over r. Okay, what produces acceleration for straight line motion? It's force. And the measure of something's uh, sort of tendency to obey Newton's first law to stay at rest if it's already at rest is the mass. And then we have something called momentum. And we have equivalent kind of things for rotation. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. Rotational inertia, the rotational equivalent of mass. And angular momentum is the rotational equivalent of linear momentum. And you can get the torque from the force, or the inertia from the mass, or the momentum from the, um, the angular momentum from the linear momentum. Those are the equations for those. OK, so we can go on and talk about more parallels. So Newton's second law, we have straight line motion, some of the forces is mass times acceleration, an equivalent thing for rotation, some of the torques is I times alpha. Impulse, force times time is change in momentum, torque times time is change in angular momentum. Okay, so just make the rotational equivalent replacements, force goes to torque, etc., and you've got the new equation. Kinetic energy, one-half mv squared goes to one-half i omega squared. Work, force, distance, cosine phi. Torque, distance, but an angular distance, cosine phi. Power, same kind of thing. Instead of displacement, it's velocity. And what's the equivalent thing for power in rotational setting? Well, force is going to go to torque. V is going to go to omega and we have the equivalent power equation. So we just make all these different replacements. Force going to torque. Mass goes to rotational inertia. Uh, displacement in a straight line goes to an angular displacement. V goes to omega. Alpha goes, A goes to alpha. And linear momentum P goes to angular momentum. And you've got an equivalent equation. So everything we do in straight line motion has its rotational equivalent. And that is all for now.